All right, guys, we're back tonight, and I got a new machine to introduce you to. And I'm trying to slow these machine reviews down, guys, but this is one you're going to want to see. Uh, if you're into diode lasers, uh, this is from a company that you may be familiar with from my channel, uh, Acemer. And uh, this is their, their book and their little logo there. Uh, early on, when I started the channel, I got my hands on the Acemer P1. And if you go back and watch that video, I made several comments about it. It was a 10-watt laser, but it cut like a 20-watt laser. All right, so when they reached out to me to try out the 33-watt version of the P2, I couldn't turn it down, guys. Uh, and I'm happy to report they did not disappoint. So if you want to see a really innovative, really cool machine that has... It has, it, it, has, it has got me speechless, and I know that's hard to believe. But stick around, and I'm going to show you the unboxing and getting it put together and the first couple of test cuts. All right, guys, so the box, as it sits, like I said, they, they logoed it up. Uh, this one got a little banged up in transit, but not a big deal. And uh, they've got it packaged nicely, so luckily nothing got tore up inside the box. Uh, guys, this is going to be a little different unboxing than what you're used to. Of course, you've got the uh, manual there, uh, some helpful information in there, which you may or may not need. And check out the uh, check out the packaging. That's that's pretty cool. They've got this uh, material kit in there. Uh, it's got several little small pieces of basswood and so forth. There's some uh, metallic uh, pieces, a uh, couple of anodized cards, and they even included a, a power speed test that they've already done uh, and some other tests for the different type of image files, which is is pretty neat. So you don't really have to go recreate that yourself if you don't want. Uh, I always do, but you know. You could you could use theirs. All right, so the next box, guys, this is the uh, accessory package. I wasn't really sure what was in here, but it uh, turns out it's basically the power cable, the USB cable, uh, the adapter cable, and uh, a couple of the little small parts there. Uh, but look at the, uh, the way that this is packaged, guys. It took me a second to realize that this machine, there's safety glasses. Those are the red safety glasses. Nice little case logoed up on there. Uh, but it took me a second to realize that this thing's already put together for the most part. Uh, this right here, uh, like I said, you've got some spare lenses uh, for the external lens for those who, uh, you know, may want to change that out. You don't got to go looking for those unless you run through more than two. Module is pretty clean. It's got this little flip down lever that we're familiar with. Uh, and there's also a hole through the back that you can reach in there and take the air assist off So it looks like it'd be relatively easy to take the air assist off The only downside that I saw for me personally is I can't take that cover off A uh, little toolbox all the necessary tools and some dip, zip ties in there Air assist pump is kind of smaller than what I'm used to but uh, we'll see how it performs And guys check this out. All right uh, The machines put together like that's it right there uh, there's no frame assembly. There's no belts. There's no synchronizing rod. There's no, there's no nothing. It's like, <laughs> it's, like it's, it's, it's like it's like they just took the module off of it, set it in a box, and included the cables. That is literally what they did. So, I was trying to get this thing out of here without tearing anything up. And look at that. I mean, it's it's in one piece. So this is going to be the simplest assembly of a laser that I have ever done in this shop, guys. All right, so as you can see, guys, it's mostly put together. Uh, nice looking machine, nice sturdy frame, has the e stop button, the switch. I mean, they they really put some thought into this machine. There's a few of these companies coming out now that are just surprising me. As you can see, they even thought to leave you enough room where you could rotate that little wing nut there all the way around to adjust the z axis. And uh, that, guys, that counts for a lot because. You know, a lot of these machines, you can't do that. So you have to try to figure out how to operate the pull and release and adjustment. It is adjustable. Uh, also, the air and the Wi-Fi antenna, they put them under the bottom, out of the way. That's kind of a pet peeve of mine. I don't know why people want to stick them on the top or on the side. But anyway, uh, the gantry moves really, 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 really smooth. Uh, it does have, and you can see, it does have 
linear rails, and there's also a switch and an, a, a place to plug in the rotary. So you don't have to unplug and plug from the uh, stepper motors, which is really cool. Uh, some of the other machines on the market have this feature, but as far as I know, uh, Acemer is the second, the second machine I've had in the shop that has this. Uh, the machine's not really all that big. I mean, it is going to be 24, a little over 24 wide and probably about 26 to 27 uh, from front to back if you're trying to put it in an enclosure. So it's it's not the biggest machine you've ever seen, but it's it's not really small either. All right, guys, so now for the assembly <laughs> that is required for this machine. Uh, loosen the uh, little adjustment there and slide the module in. It is a snug fit. Uh, but once you get it in there, tighten that back up and you're ready to go. Now, as I mentioned, this little knob is adjustable. So you can either spin it like that if you want, or if you want it to end in a certain position, you can do the pull out and rotate and release to get it to that spot where, where you know, just preferred spot where you like it. That's really handy. I mean, I like the fact that you can spin it all the way around, but the fact that it is also adjustable to you know the location in which it's going to end up when you tighten it that's that's neat as well uh, the little kick stand that goes with the focus adjustment is you know it's nice another thing that they claim and i can't validate this because i don't own every laser guys but they claim that they're the first ones to be using linear rails on the gantry it's already got all the cable management done guys you, you, you plug that guy in right there all right, it's a little tough, but I like the fact that it is a little tough. They're using a little bit better connectors than some of the machines that use. Uh, this is like a yellow connector that's kind of directional. And then you just pretty much take the, the, the airline, run it down there, snap it in. And all right, guys, so uh, that concludes the assembly of the uh, Acemer P P2. Uh, I'm going to uh, add a couple of zip ties right here. They included a little ear that sticks up that's pretty neat. Uh, that allows you to run zip ties around that cable that plugs into the module to prevent it from pulling loose or you know developing any stresses on that plug which i think is another uh, another good idea that they had uh, i do know of some machines on the market that if you don't uh, take measures to keep that from working its way loose it will pop out or you know potentially break from uh, use so so that's a that was a, a, a very innovative little feature that they've added right there all right, guys, so spun a machine around to get it towards where I'm going to be sitting for my computer and went ahead and cut those little pigtails off of the zip ties. And, and now we're to the phase of hooking it up and getting it running. So, I mean, it's just that easy. I mean, so if you do not like uh, the assembly process of these lasers, then this, <laughs> this machine is by far the simplest assembly I have ever had here in the shop. So uh, this might be this might be something you want to look into for that reason, if that's a, a big stickler of yours. So I'm going to give this thing some power and get the USB hooked up, and we'll be ready to rock. All right, guys, over at the computer, and one of the first things I like to do is any files that are included on that little micro SD card, I like to go ahead and copy those and save them to a place on my network, or in your case, maybe on your computer. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here, is I'm just copying all that over. Uh, creating a folder, naming it after the machine. That way, if I ever need to go back and revert anything or need a firmware tool or anything like that, uh, if there was to be a situation with the SD card getting lost or broken, I have copies of everything that came with the machine. Uh, and that can be that can be very, very helpful sometimes uh, if you find yourself in those situations. All right, guys, so the file's finished up. I'm going to go ahead in here and just kind of dig through, let you see what it comes with. Uh, this is just some images that they include, uh, some free, I guess some like free clip art files or whatever. Uh, I'm going to blow those up into thumbnails so you can kind of just look through there and see what they are. Mostly just animals and you got that one speed test down there. But, uh, you know, some good files to practice with if you wanted to do so. Uh, the next one is going to be the engraving parameters, which is going to be or should be uh, basically power settings. Uh, these are going to be recommended power settings from Acemer for the, P, uh, the P233 watt. Now, they did include the one for the, 30, uh, for the 20 and the 10 as well. Uh, but I went into the 33 because that's the machine that we have just to kind of get a look at that. Uh, and then, of course, you have all of your other you know, manuals and what you might need and so forth. 
Uh, and then here you have some videos, some tutorial videos that if you have any trouble, which hopefully isn't with the assembly, you can refer back to those. Uh, in here you'll notice there's a config file for Lightburn as well as uh, Lightburn. So that config file may come in handy uh, in the setup process. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that out. And I'm just gonna move it out to the main directory uh, in that folder so that I can find it. I like to keep stock configuration files from my machines because sometimes guys, I get in there and I mess around with those things trying to improve upon them. And if you accidentally hit the wrong button, then you know at least this way you can go back and, and fix whatever you messed up. So I put that out there where I can find it. And then, like I said, you've got a, you just got a bunch of different files for testing and images and stuff. So most most of this is just going to be reference materials or you know testing. But all together, guys, they include a variety of things that you know you don't get from most uh, companies. And I just wanted to see what this tiger looked like uh, in Lightburn, so I went ahead and opened that guy up so that we could get a get a little view of it. But it looks as though they've already processed these images. So if that was something you wanted to play with, you would be able to do so with very minimal setup if you're if you're new to laser engraving. All right, guys, now for the light burn setup. And a lot of people ask me about this process, so I'm bringing you guys along. I have This is the very first time I've connected this machine. So I'm going to go ahead and do the fine laser first and just see how that works out. Uh, sometimes it does take a little while for light burn to recognize a machine, especially in my shop where I have multiple devices connected at multiple USB hubs. So I'm going to give it a few minutes and uh, see what it comes up with here. And as you can see, it did find a machine. Uh, everything appears to be a new laser that I have because that is not the work area of my normal machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and as if we're going to automatically add this thing. I will be renaming it because I want to keep track of which machine is, you know, which profile. So I'm renaming it to the Asmer P2 33 watt. And we'll just hit next. I do turn off auto home if there's ever a problem with the setup, guys. You do not want that on because it is hard to deal with uh, if there is a, an issue with the configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and select that machine. I'm going to look at here and see what it's set as. It says garble because I like to confirm that. Because some of these machines will, from time to time, use one of those legacy uh, types. And this is a GRBL machine. So I wanted to make sure that that was selected properly. Uh, it did find it earlier on COM9. But it doesn't look like I'm getting any feedback from the machine here doing it this way. So I'm going to go into Device Manager. I'm just going to go and look at my ports in the device manager and confirm that that CH340 chip is showing up on the uh, correct port, which it is. It's showing up on COM9, so that should be it, but not want to connect. So, guys, when this happens, or if this happens, or just save yourself the trouble, uh, the next step would be to use the configuration file that was sent with the machine to make sure that this was uh, done properly. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to import and I'm going to go back to that folder. If you remember me telling you that that file may come in handy, uh, this is the point where it comes in handy. So I'm just going to select the profile that shipped with the machine and we're going to use that one and uh, see what happens. So going back to find the machine, get it selected, make sure it's on COM9, uh, put it on COM9 and boom, it finds it. So there's your confirmation that it found it. And uh, so I'm going to go in here and delete the one that I created. Uh, so do yourself a favor if you get one of these. Just go ahead and use their config file. It makes it a lot easier. But it does install it as GRBL, uh, serial USB port. I mean, I don't know where the difference is, but it did not want to see the machine doing it manually. So I just go in and rename this profile. And I'm going to save it and use it as my own, just making sure all the settings are the way I want them. But all in all, guys, I mean... They've provided you with the light burn profile, so that makes that step easy. I don't know how much easier they could have made this machine. Uh, so now I'm just confirming that I'm getting a good connection every time. I'm going to home the machine and make sure that it responds. And as you can see in the video, it does. So guys, we're ready to make some smoke. All right, got some uh, 4.5 millimeter Luan loaded there. Uh, adjusted my focus, made sure everything's nice and snug. 
Uh, the focus, like I said, it's, 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 it's not too bad. They could have given us a little bit more clearance between the little flip laser, lever and the air nozzle, but all in all, it's doable. Uh, it's not a major uh, issue there. So going to go back and home the machine again. And guys, we're going to throw up a speed and power test. Uh, as you can see, I'm running the Acemer uh, air pump on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my 30 watt uh, cut test. This is a cut test, pretty much just a generic file that I use with most every 30 watt machine comes in. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and frame that out. And as long as I get a good frame on it, then we're going to run this thing and uh, just see what this guy's made out of. So everything frames well. I'm going to go ahead and uh, making sure the air assist is turned on for this test because I do want to use it and it's automatic air assist. I'll turn off the air assist for the text. And guys, hindsight, I probably should have looked at those text settings because those were... Uh, <laughs> Those settings for the text were not adequate. I don't know what machine I was testing with, but uh, yeah, the text went a little too fast. So we'll let this uh, kind of get through real quick here. All right, guys, watch how smooth this guy goes to the home position. Uh, this machine is, it's impressing me already at this point just by the smoothness of it. But look at this, guys, almost every square dropped I mean, just fell straight out. The ones that didn't were simply binded because the kerf on this machine is really, really thin. And so they just kind of drop a little bit and hang. Uh, but none of them were like held or anything like that. This is supposed to be my 30 watt cut test, guys. And this thing just dominated it. So the problem that I have now is this test, this power test doesn't go up high enough on speed. I got one little piece right there that's not wanting to fall out. And you can see this is a piece of plywood that got wet, so that's that's why I'm using it for testing. Uh, and it may be something to do with that, but it has blowed out every square on this power test. So, guys, it's back to the drawing board to make it go a little faster because I guess now I've got to come up with a 40-watt cut test for this 33-watt machine to use. So that's what I'm doing now. Uh, I'm going to go in here. Of course, I noticed that the text was way too fast. Uh, I don't know why I had that setting in there, but it, it got in there and it got saved. So that was that was on me. So I changed the text setting so we can read the text a little bit better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this speed test. And guys, if you don't know how to use this uh, little tool here in Lightburn, I've got a video on that as well. But I'm going to go in and change basically the top speed on that speed test to the bottom speed on this new one. It's going to go from 15 millimeters a second up to 30. And 30 millimeters a second, guys, is insane for a 33 watt in my opinion but right now i have no idea where the ceiling on this machine is going to be so we're going to run this one and see how it does all right guys so as you can see i've got the uh, factory pump connected for air assist uh, so that's going to this is going to be the test run for the factory pump i did not change anything on the machine uh, all i did was change my settings on the test grid to try to figure out where the top speed on this machine is I'm just kind of tapping those things because a lot of them, like I said, they'll drop, but they turn kind of sideways and won't fall out. So I'm just tapping around to see what falls out and what doesn't. Uh, but this thing really surprised me as far as the speed. Uh, that at the bottom, guys, that's that's 15 at the bottom. And you can see some of the ones above the 15 actually tried to cut out, but they didn't quite make it, which is completely understandable at these speeds. Uh, most machines that I get in here do not max out that 30 watt test grid. Uh, hardly ever. I've never seen that happen. So I was a little surprised. But you're looking at about 17 millimeters a second and it's getting pretty consistent drops there. All right, guys. Aceberg insisted that I uh, give you all a little poster on this event they're having. Engrave your love. And no, guys, this does not mean go out and engrave your wife or your girlfriend. But it's an event that they're having. So there you go, guys. So I cut the test in short, and it's not any reason other than I got to make room in an enclosure. Okay, it's that simple. I, I, I hate it, but <laughs> some of the other machines in the shop have done a really good job. But guys, the results that I'm getting from this thing. And let me show you what we're working with here. All right, on the, on the top, first of all, this is my normal... 30 watt cut test that I use on 30 watt machines and it maxed it out. Now I have one little hanger right here, which is probably something to do with the material based on the fact that nothing else around it did that. 
uh, but it, it knocked it out of the park. So I actually had to modify my test file for this machine. Uh, I did have the text settings going a little too fast here. Uh, so I went and adjusted that as well. But I changed my, my, my speed settings from 15 millimeters a second up to 30. Okay, I've had some machines in the shop that could cut at 12 millimeters a second. The, you know, some of the ones I'm using right now uh, in the 30 watt range, I can cut at eight millimeters a second and be confident that I'm gonna get clean drops. But guys, 15, and technically 17, technically I could, on, with, with their air pump, which is this one, and my shop air, I could technically cut at 17. Now, I probably wouldn't because, you know, if there's a little hard spot in the wood or something, so I would probably drop it down to 15. But 15 millimeters a second compared to my usual 6 to 8 millimeters a second between the 20 and 30 watt classes means that any cutting that I do will be finished in half the time. So, guys, you know I'm a big stickler for work area, but... The speed and power of this machine, yeah, I think it's going to make up for it because even though my secondary enclosure, the smaller enclosure, typically I use it for small projects such as bamboo cutting boards, uh, easy, simple engraves, just small stuff. You know, I still have the big enclosure and I'm about to upgrade it to a 35 watt uh, machine. So I hate it longer. <laughs> I hate it. Longer is a good machine, but you can't no machine i've got in the 30 watt class right now can compete with this and so welcome to your new home asmer p2 uh i will be making preparations to move it into my secondary enclosure here my smaller enclosure and i'm also going to be doing a little bit of modifications and tweaks to it because it does have automatic air assist but it uses its own pumps so there's going to be some engineering involved to get it to operate my m8 relay in the enclosure to use my air because like i said i'm getting i am you know their air assist pump works well as far as the cutting ability no big difference but you can tell an obvious difference in the cleanliness of the cut using my 10 psi of regulated air so i will be switching it over to my regulator uh as soon as i can get it in there so that's coming Luckily, I've gotten pretty good at adapting these things. As long as it's got a 12 volt or 24 volt output from the machine, I can hook that right up to my relay and rock on. So that's the good stuff about the machine, guys. So I went over some of the things about it in the uh, assembly, kind of pointing things out to you. Uh, those are some really good characteristics, okay? The one thing that I really couldn't convey uh, as well in the video, I, m I mentioned it, but I want to reiterate is that shield. Okay, y'all know I don't like those things. I enclose all my machines. If I had to ding them on anything, that's all I got. That's all I can come up with. But under the circumstances, if it'll continue to do this, I can live with a shield. Okay, that's just, <laughs> it's a trade-off, I guess. You know, I get something I don't like. For something I really, really like. Now, I will say this. If assembling machines is not your forte, it's not your thing, I didn't do anything to this, guys. I did reach down and check the belt tension just to make sure I wasn't going to tear anything up by jumping a belt. Oh, uh, I didn't adjust anything on this guy. It, you saw it. It come out of the box already put together. I literally had to put the module on it, plug some stuff up, add a couple of zip ties, and then... It literally took me longer to get it out of the box and look at everything than it did to put it together. So, Acemer, you, uh, you have outdone yourself once again. And this machine, I can see it putting some other machines out of work, no doubt. Uh, the switch on the back for adding a rotary is really, really neat. And they send you a cable uh, in case you already have a rotary, if you have another rotary or whatever. They send you an adapter cable to convert your stepper motor connection over to the connection on the back of the machine. So that enables you to use whatever rotary or chuck or whatever you have with this machine, assuming that you configure it correctly. So that's uh, it's pretty impressive. Uh, it's got the, the switch, the power switch with the key. Some of y'all may like that, uh, where you can turn it off and on 
and take the key out and take it with you. Or you can just do like I do, turn it on and put the key away because I never turn the key off. If somebody breaks in my shop to use my machines, they're probably not worried about a switch. So it has the e-stop flame sensors, all of the other sensors. And guys, there'll be a link down below if you want to see all the technical specs and all of the, all of the engineering type stuff. Here, like I said, I focus on does it work? Does it do what they say it does? And how well does it do it? Now, another thing that I haven't done and I'm going to do in the next video, which will be hopefully this week, is once I get into the enclosure, we're going to go into the controller, look at the settings, and see if they've got this beast unleashed to be able to perform as fast as it can or if there's any tweaking that needs to be done. Uh, so all in all, guys, so far it gets two thumbs up with me. Uh, it has won a spot in the enclosure if nothing else temporarily until it proves me otherwise uh, i will be moving it over because i i need that kind of cutting ability in this shop for a uh, small frame machine so but if you hadn't already guys go hit that subscribe button hit the bell to get notifications that way any videos i put out you'll get notified youtube will let you know and you can come check it out uh, i am trying to limit some of the equipment stuff but i've got a little bit of a backlog i've got to clear out and we'll get back to doing more and more projects and we're going to see what this machine's made of. So until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.